This is a follow-up demo of a network visualization tool developed and used at Utah State University. You may wish to view the earlier video before viewing this one. We refer to this visualization tool as the blinking lights. The blinking lights network visualizer helps you monitor the status of a large number of IP addresses. In this demo, it is monitoring live network activity. It is monitoring the border of USU's network. It is evening and most of USU's users have gone home. The predators have dispersed. Down here near the bottom we can see a single TCP scan. This is being done by a remote Chinese address. It is scanning for web servers. It is probing TCP 80, TCP 8080, and 3128. The visualizer supports zooming in. Just point and roll the mouse button. The top and bottom boxes at this zoom are part of our wireless deployment. The green hatched areas are unallocated IP address space. It is darknet. There is no USU equipment in the darknet. At this zoom level you can more clearly see the mechanics of the visualization square areas that represent every IP address actually consist of two triangles. The bottom right triangle represents packets sent to the IP address. The top left triangle represents packets sent from an IP address. Data from the visualization server is summarized by the client 30 times a second. Every detected packet increases the color level of its protocol type within its triangle until it hits the maximum value. TCP packets increase the green level. UDP packets increase the red level. Packets for other protocols including ICMP and IPsec increase the blue level. An IP that is sending traffic or receiving traffic that mixes protocols like Skype or a peer-to-peer peer, has a distinctive orange color. Packets that are blocked by the border firewall cause a white X shape to be drawn. This shape can freely mix with the other colors. Every update interval, the client decreases the saturation for all triangles that didn't receive any traffic. This causes a slow fade in the absence of traffic. The increments and the decrements are not linear. The human eye does not respond linearly to changes in color and light levels. The IP visualizer has a client server architecture. At USU, the server is located on a monitor or a span port at the border. The client can run anywhere. When the client starts up, it contacts the server and asks for summary data. The server summarizes multiple packets into a single report packet. Typically, it gets a 200 to 1 advantage. So, if the server is monitoring a combined in and out of 160,000 packets per second, the client receives about 800 report packets per second. The report packets are UDP. 
The client display is drawn using the SDL abstraction layer. This allows for portability, rapid screen updates, and easy scaling. The IP visualization server has minor CPU demands. It requires enough I.O. to handle your full network load. The IP visualization client has modest CPU demands. This demo is running on a two-year-old Dell Optiplex 755. It has a NVIDIA GPU. It has an Intel 2.6 GHz Core Duo CPU. As you can see, the client is consuming about 50% of the processing power of one core. Currently, the code has some USU dependencies but it is being run at other institutions. The visualizer can scale down to visualize smaller allocations of IP address space. Here it's visualizing a slash 16. It works best if the display is square. On the small end, you could use it to visualize a slash 28, a slash 26, or a slash 24 or really anything up to a slash 16. The client display could probably scale up to visualizing a slash 12, but the current client server data stream limits you to a slash 16. And of course, the entire concept of this visualizer has to be rethought to accommodate IPv6.